I thought we were the protectors of truth. Democrats, Republicans, you all lie. We, a small band of survivors, are on our way to the Steel City to find the resistance. Join us. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance with Senior Airman Ward Miller and the ironclad voice of Pittsburgh Hutch Jr. laying down verbal C4 to blow away the lies and the political tomfoolery. Your papers have been cleared. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Steel City Resistance. My name is Hutz Jr., and I am located deep, deep down in the bunker in the city of Pittsburgh. And I'm Ward Miller, also in the city of Pittsburgh here in Mission Control. Uh, we got a little bit of snow going on. Uh, it, it, it's Christmas time again. It is. It's uh, it's ridiculous out there. I was, uh, my personal opinion. Snow is good up until January 1st. Up until New Year's, snow's okay. Anything after that is completely unauthorized. <laughs> Especially well, we when... Have, we're, in, we're in the midst of an unauthorized snowstorm. <laughs> and somebody's going to have to answer to Hutch for this. Especially when you live in Pittsburgh, because there's a phenomenon after a couple of days of the snow being on the ground called black snow. And it's like especially prevalent on pat bus routes. But uh, we'll just leave that alone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I got to apologize a little bit. We were on the road. We had to get you the, the crucial elements of information, but it was not pretty. Uh, if you watch the video, the TV, it was tough. It was tough, ladies and gentlemen. But we had to cobble something together. You know what I mean, Ward? I mean, it, it's a, such a it, it's a situation where the show must go on no matter what, unless it's completely impossible. Yeah, we you know we tried to make it work, and and the audio part of it wasn't terrible. But the, the video did struggle quite a bit, uh, and we apologize for that. But, I mean, there, there's not a whole lot you can do, you know, when, uh, you know, we're doing live broadcasts from Fort Bragg on a laptop that has, that Hutch has <laughs> it, over it, the wireless. a hotel with no freaking bandwidth. Yeah, He's it on was a dollop and modem. And, I, was, I was lucky the lights weren't flickering down there, but uh, freaking artillery's going off, shaking the windows and shit. Uh, anyway, uh, to the news. Uh, it seems that uh, I never liked the guy anyway. I did before I knew him. But it looks like uh, Scott Brown is not going to try to uh, take Senator John Kerry, well, Secretary of State now, uh, John Kerry's Senate seat. So Barney Frank is back in the running. <laughs> I thought Frank was retiring. He was. But he, he was uh, when they uh, uh, picked the, the interim senator. Barney Frank was like on his knees, man, trying to get the, trying to get that appointment, and it didn't happen. Uh, they appointed some dude named Mo, Mo something, and uh, Barney Frank was Mo all, money. yeah, he was all upset and everything. And then uh, I don't know, they're talking about maybe he's gonna he's gonna run uh, Massachusetts, really, Barney Frank? Come on now, I mean, I know you're liberal, but that guy's a cartoon character. I mean that's that's right up there with the the, the guy from Minnesota, Al Franken. Al yeah, well, when you start looking around and saying, "Hey, what's you know, why are we in such you know uh, economic having such economic issues?" And Barney Frank is one of the guys you have to look at because you know when Fannie Mae and and Freddie Mac crashed, that was, I mean. Basically, that was Barney Frank's love child. Yeah, it was, absolutely. Um, Him and uh, Chris Dodd. I mean, these people stood there. and we, We've documented on the program. I mean, Ward, we've got 107 shows out there. You know, we've said it over and over. It's in the archival evidence locker uh, that these guys caused the housing bubble. Between, oh, absolutely. Between them, Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter and Acorn, I mean, this was a self-inflicted wound. How dare you stand up there and try to blame somebody else? And this is the thing, this is the thing that gets me about Democrats. And God, they got to wake up soon because they're not all low-information people. I know a lot of very intelligent Democrats that have got to be getting tired for being uh, assumed that they're stupid. You know, that would offend me. If a Republican came out and told lies, 
I mean, in my name, I would be offended. Well, and I am when they is, do. The, the, the problem is that, that the people that are uh, Democrats just follow blindly. They, they could come out and, and I'm totally shocked that they haven't tried something like this yet, where Obama could come out and declare the world flat and see how many of them swear to it. Oh, absolutely. That, that, I mean, that's really what it is, because yeah. they can lie. I mean, they come out and they lie, and they have their constituents who will run right behind them and, and swear and, and take oaths, you know, that what they said was the God's honest truth. Yep, definitely. Uh, now, some we've always pledged that we were going to call a pig a pig here, so it, it is with great sadness uh, that I have to announce uh, the Obama administration is going to transfer a number of F-16s, although they are the export model and would be shot down handily by the Israelis, they're still F-16s, and a number of M1A1 tanks to Egypt. So they're virtually arming the Muslim right. Brotherhood. The, the Muslim Brotherhood. And Rand Paul did a courageous thing, and he introduced legislation that would block that. And Ward, 26 Republicans voted against it, and Pat Toomey was one of them. Yeah. And, I mean... And basically what they did was they voted to table it. Right, and they voted yay to table it. Ta yeah. Table means kill it, right? The... Well, it means that they're not going to actually... They have... <laughs> that's the funny thing. They have a vote to see if they're going to have a vote. Right. And the, their vote was, no, we're not even going to talk about it. But, I mean, there was some, there were some strong senators that voted no. Uh, Rand Paul among them and, and several others. What was Rand Paul's bill? Right, and, and uh, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio. But Lindsey Graham, John McCain, Pat Toomey, and you go on our website, steelcityresistance.wordpress.com. It's the opening story. I think it's still the first if it's not the first, scroll down, it's the second. And it lists all of the senators that voted against Rand Paul and against common sense and against American and Israeli national security. And they can use all the excuses they want because they've got a lot of them. They've got excuse after excuse, and uh, it's just not holding water. It's just not. These old times have got to end. We've got to get these people out of there. Now, Pat Toomey, you're decent on fiscal issues. But let me give you some advice. Don't follow Lindsey Graham and John McCain. Follow Rand Paul. You know, follow some of these strong guys. Ted Cruz. You moron. Well, actually, I, I gotta I gotta say something on to, in Toomey's defense, and you usually don't hear me saying that. Um, I voted for the guy. Don't get me wrong. But uh, Toomey actually proposed um, an amendment to the Constitution that will only allow Cong members of Congress and Senate to have, no, I think it's the Congress has three terms and the Senate has two or vice versa. I, I can't remember which way it was, but he, he actually is backing uh, uh, term limits legislation. Oh, he's, he's excellent in some areas. There's no question. I mean, there's definitely no question, but it's the, it's these things that, uh, just make me cringe when they do things like this, and I don't know if it's he's doing it as a favor to somebody. You know, is Washington getting to him uh, that this happens? But there's several other senators on there that I like in other areas. Uh, but we have to recognize this this new dynamic on the international scene, especially in the Middle East, and how it's leeching over here. You know, uh, <laughs> but I mean, they use they use these, this logic like it's going to create jobs. <laughs> I mean, it's like we're going to give them the money to buy stuff off of us, and that's going to create jobs. You know, it's like ridiculous, man. I mean, yeah. But uh, anyway, that was just something that I had to throw out there. I felt obligated because I am not going to be accused of being one-sided and protecting Republicans because I have no love for Republicans as an organization. I don't. Uh, they, they've gone too far astray. If we can get this ship back in order a little bit more, uh, then maybe we can start talking Republicans. Yeah. But hopefully, the, I mean, right now they're just the lesser of two evils. Absolutely. And there's some of them, like I said, I forget, I can't remember if the number was 19 or 12, 
that voted with Rand Paul with some balls. Uh, but those are some solid guys. And the thing about it is you, you don't recognize the names of three-quarters of them. Yeah, because they're pretty much all you know, Tea Party Republicans. Right. And, and we're going to get into a fresh member down the show here. But uh, – Oh, I, well, while we're talking, I, I, this isn't in the notes, so I'm going to throw you a curve and make it really difficult for you to do show notes. Um, <laughs> did, did you watch any of that confirmation hearing last week? Uh, hey, Hagel? For, um, Hagel? Hagel? Uh, yeah. Bits and pieces of it that I was able to get from news sources. I didn't watch the entire thing, no. I'll tell you what. That's what he, I got he, you for. He was grossly unprepared uh, for the questioning he got. And uh, I can't remember who it was, that, but there was somebody who asked him exactly why did the uh, why are the Iranians endorsing you for Secretary of Defense? Damn, that had to hurt. And and he's like, well, well they, I mean, they're they're a legitimate uh, legitimate government, and this, that, and the other thing. It's like, no, they're not. That you know, and he's trying to say they had legitimate elections. Oh yeah, right. And, and, you know, everything's on the up and up and there's nothing wrong with, you know, what they do and whatnot. And it's like, you know what? Um, you're not the guy. No. Uh, especially the, the guy that, that I want to be, you know, controlling our military and, and, and deciding what our military can and cannot do. Yeah, it's going it, to be ridiculous. ugly. Uh, you know, and the, and the bad part about it is he's going to get confirmed. I mean. These things are just... I don't know. He, nah, he'll probably... He, nah, I don't know. I mean, it's possible it's that just, he won't... Because there were Democrats that were that were, that were were slamming on him, too. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it wasn't just it wasn't just Republicans lining up to, to take their shots at him. We'll see what happens, but I got a feeling that uh, the game is rigged. Uh, we'll, we'll find out, though. I, I don't think he should be Secretary of Defense. Uh, no. Not at all. Well, I didn't think Kerry should have been Secretary of State either. Jesus, but... can you believe it? This is just, you know, uh, the only thing that, that could possibly be good out of this is that they've completely and utterly swung so far to the left that they're not going to be able to come back to the center. So they're going to absolutely, I mean, he had to trick people to get in. You know what I mean? He had to say that he was for the Second Amendment and this, that, you can keep your insurance and all these lies that we knew were lies. But now they're all getting stripped and there's no way for them to turn back now. So... Either the country is leftist or it's not, you know, is my, yeah. is my opinion. I, I don't think there's any way, way, shape, or form that he keeps anybody that considers themselves any way as moderate. Uh, but we'll find out. I was surprised last time. Uh, now, in a surprising turn of events and a very ironic truth, the Board of Education in Newtown, Connecticut, siding with the NRA to have armed guards in their schools. Oh. Well, no, I mean, that that makes total sense. I mean, and Complete. once again, the, I mean, there was just the, the guy down in uh, Alabama, wasn't it? That that uh, that El there was an armed guard at the, at the school. In Atlanta, I think. Was it Atlanta? I think so. Uh, it, I somewhere. knew it was somewhere in the south. Yeah. And, um, but you don't see any any coverage of it on the news that the fact that there was an armed guard in the place that when the the would be shooter came rolling in, he was stopped almost immediately. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing the way uh, the truth kind of seeps in. Uh, have, have you noticed that? I mean, is it just me, or or is like the entire cabinet? And all the agency heads, everybody's quitting, Ward. I don't know if they know something that we don't know, but I swear like six people quit in the last couple of days. Well, it's rats from a sinking ship. I, I um, mean, it is. I've never well, seen anything I, like this. Well, I think part of it, too, is the fact that in the second term, you know, I don't know if it's a matter of these people couldn't handle all the lies that they've told. Uh, maybe they got a guilty conscience. Maybe they got forced out. Maybe they got forced out. But the the thing is, like the guys like Geithner, you know, Hillary, Hillary bailed early so that she can turn around and run in 2016. That's the only reason she left. She didn't leave because she she was war eyed. She didn't leave because of insert stupid ass bullshit, you know, reason here. She left so she could get out get outside. She, the there was a, 
the whole love fest that they had last week on 60 Minutes. That was nauseating. Obama. That was nauseating. That really yeah, was. Yeah, about what a great job oh, she did. Oh, my God. And, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Eight, and eight it's embassies like, were attacked in her, in her tenure. Eight embassies were attacked. Yeah, and Benghazi, and she keeps using the... Benghazi wasn't as bad as it could have been. And it's like, how could it have been any worse? He killed them all. Uh, and, and she actually used the used the phrase, some people refuse to accept the facts. She's such an... I, I'll tell you, that woman is so arrogant. The whole family. The whole family I, is arrogant. I mean, it's just disgusting that the American people, the American Democrat Party would put up with this. I mean... Well, she came out and said that the Benghazi massacre... And the murdered ambassador won't affect her run for president in 2016. Yeah, it will, Hillary. We'll make sure of that. Don't worry about that. Uh, hopefully, we'll just continue to gain strength until then. And, uh, I mean, some of our, our power is evident in the fact that uh, just in the last day or two, it was announced the departure of NBC News president Steve Capus. Now, this, this guy, this scumbag ought to be in prison. He ought to be going to prison. This is the organization that ruined George Zimmerman. I mean, this is the organization that has been caught editing tape. Uh, they edited tape of Mitt Romney. They edited tape of, of George Zimmerman. And most recently, they got caught and didn't apologize for editing tape in Sandy Hook when a grieving father, uh, they made it look like NRA Tea Party types heckled him. How disgusting. I mean, that's they want to bend the narrative in their direction. Okay, the, that's the difference between what they do and what we do. We take the news and we try and condense it down into a, a, an hour-long bite, and we we give people a lot of information. <clears throat> However, we don't try and modify the news no. so that that you accept our viewpoint or reject our viewpoint. If you don't want to listen to what we're saying and you think that we're full of crap, that's fine. But we're going to tell you what, you know, the truth as we know it. And I mean, we're not trying a... to bend the narrative, which is what NBC's trying to do. That's why they they edit video, they edit audio, they make it make it sound like what they're doing is right. It's criminal though. though. The way they do yeah. it is criminal. If 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 I personally got caught up in something like that, and I had the resources, I'd go for the throat, man. That's so criminal and so, oh, I, I mean, that's libelous, some of the things that they do. I mean, with George Zimmerman, geez, oh, man. Uh, if I was him, I'd, I'd be hitting and NBC he is. with the biggest damn lawsuit. I hope, I, I, because, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing, all right? It got to the point where everybody in the country knows your name. Oh, right. So unless he unless he assumes a false name, which is illegal, uh and, and assumes a false social security number, he could be president, but he but he can't get another job uh, because. And he can't he show go? his face. I mean, he'd have to get exactly. plastic surgery, man. So I mean, for for him to have a living, you know, basically that's what they took away from him. I mean, had he been guilty, it would have been a totally different story. But I mean, the they made that, it up all the along the way. They, that, well, here's the thing. They tried him in the in the press, and they fixed the evidence. Exactly. I mean, if you remember, at first, the uh, you know they said there's no way this happened, this that, and the other thing, and they played this Trayvon thug off to be a little baby, and then you know they showed the the back of the head shot, and it didn't have anything on it. Then it was a little bit of a blotch. The next thing you know, oh, we found this HD cam. It shows the gashes on his head. You know, this yeah. is like months later. You know, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's totally unbelievable. And I think it's a cause worth harping on. I'm not letting go of this, man. Every time I see these people do this, uh, I'd like to see NBC go bankrupt. I would. I don't know if that's. I mean, I hear that they're they're bleeding viewers, uh, and oh, I they're, they're hemorrhaging viewers. And, and I hear people resigning. I mean, I just hope they go in the dustbin of history where they belong. Criminal bastards. That's all there is well, to it. Well, part of the the whole thing was during the the whole Trayvon Martin George Zimmerman thing. Uh, one of the um, the big, uh, I guess, NBC news shows was the Today Show that carried most of the the uh, Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman stuff. And then it came out that it was a fake. Unreal. And then, 
Okay, we'll keep an eye on it, ladies and gentlemen. That we will. Eric sent us an email from the Downsizer Dispatch. And uh, it's the official email newsletter of DC.org Inc. And the Downsize DC Foundation. And it's basically about Piers Morgan and how he likes to ask questions about gun ownership and then drown out the answers. And they've got a plan to drown him out with our answers. And what they want you to do on Twitter is go to at Piers Tonight. You ask questions, but don't encourage the answers. Will you have the integrity to read the answers here? And it uh, goes to a link that I'm not going to have because it's a shortened link. Uh, but it basically points to an article. You might have to do some of your own research here. Points to an article that's titled, How Michael Shermer, S-H-E-R-M-E-R, -E Failed to Think Critically About Gun Prohibition. And again, the link is a shortened link, so it won't help you. But go ahead and do your own research on that. Uh, and then you can go to his comment page. And all every one of these links is shortened. <laughs> I'm sorry about of that. Of course they are. But uh, anyway, you can go to the Downsizer Dispatch and check it out yourself. Uh, and that way you'll be able to click on them and whatnot. But it's a good idea. It basically shows you how to contact the... Uh, Pierce Morgan and just drown him out the way he does everybody else. He's nasty too. I don't know that guy there. I did something about him. I don't like him. Well, it, it, it's one of them things where he wants to get everybody on his show, you know. But as soon as they, you know, they come on, he. I mean, that's the whole thing. Yeah. It doesn't matter who he gets. He's going to get them on and and try and get everybody all wound up, and then he tries to shot them down. I saw he, he tried to do the same thing with uh, Ted Nugent. Yeah, I and, saw that. And, and and Nugent owned his ass. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, the, the thing is, Ted's number one, a, a, a extremely uh, vocal supporter of the Second Amendment, and he's also uh, batshit crazy. Yeah, he is. So <laughs> he, he doesn't have any compunction about going on there, and he, he told him point blank, you know, this is the way it is. Now, if it wasn't Nugent, when he had the other people on there, he'd get them on there and say, so you say everybody should have a gun. And they say, yeah, but – and before they can finish their yeah. thing, he's jumping on them. I mean, he couldn't do it to Ted because Ted wouldn't put up with it. Just like but, Axelrod does the same thing. Gibbs does the same thing. They oh, all yeah. do it. They all do it. It, it. Ladies and gentlemen, can't you see through this yet? I mean, it's just every single one of them. They have nothing to say. Yeah, but it, it, and that's the, the typical Democrat yeah. uh, thinking is, well, I don't got nothing to say, but I'm going to just say it really loud. And they're so, so predictable. I mean, if you think back when when they rolled out Gabby Giffords the other day, think back to when Reagan got shot. Remember when they rolled Brady out? They did yep. the same damn thing, man. It's it's despicable, and, and, and it's predictable. I mean, when you're our age, you, you've seen this several times. It's not nothing new here. It's the same playbook. They're playing Americans yeah. for stupid. Yeah, well, and it's and working. here's the thing: even after Reagan got shot, you know, every, you know, the the normal reaction would have been, okay, you, you just shot the president of the United States, and the president's going to say, hey, you know what? We're going to we're going to be doing a gun ban, and that wasn't the case. Reagan said, you know, we have the Second Amendment for a reason, you know. Although and, he feebly signed on to an assault weapons idea. I, yeah, I've he had signed us. I've had that put in my face a couple of times, and I had to say, well, I'm sorry, he was wrong. Yeah, but, I mean. Uh, I know, <laughs> Anybody man. who thinks for one second, you know, that you can't go out on the street today and come in with a Mac 10 that's fully automatic, you're out of your damn mind. All right, I don't care how illegal it is. You yeah. can get it. Oh, sure. I mean, it's like anything else. Let's go to you Mexico. <laughs> well, go to no Chicago. Her heroin's illegal. Yeah. And you can walk down the street and you can get that too. So it, it, the, the fact that, that these people think that they can regulate and, uh, you know, you know, Ill illegalize or whatever, whatever, however you pronounce that word. Criminalize. You know, criminalize, yeah. That you're going to criminalize uh, weapons of any sort, you're out of your damn mind. The, the war on <laughs> drugs has been going on since the 80s, and Crack, we're no closer to a win. Crack's cheap as hell, <laughs> and, it's exactly. and it's plentiful. 
No, I had but a, it's illegal. Right. That's my point. Uh, it's illegal. I heard so a good argument. Who thinks that because they make something illegal that it go that it magically goes away? You're out of your damn mind. Just look at prohibition. I mean, look what happened there. He created an empire in the mob. But uh, I heard a good a good argument on how to counter the the semi-automatic rifle ban. And uh, when somebody asks you, well, why should you have that? Because the cops do. I mean, if they think it's a good weapon to, to take a gunman out, why isn't it good for me? You know, I should well, be equally is, armed. No, and the thing is, the cops don't have AR-15s. They have M-16s. They can go lock. They can go fully auto. I don't know if they can or not. I think it's different in each. Whatever, fine. But I, I want a semi-automatic one. I don't want. Well, yeah. a, I don't want an automatic anyway. No, automatic. Anybody wants an automatic that has never fired an automatic right. weapon. All you're doing is wasting rounds. I mean, if you look at a target, you might hit the first two or three, but after that, I mean, your sight picture's gone. You know, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, your weekly Jihad report, January 26th to 1 February, 39 Jihad attacks, 6 Alua Akbars, 265 dead bodies, and 336 critically injured. The religion of peace, ladies and gentlemen, one body at a time. You know what, Hutch? I think for the for the jihad report, we're going to actually have to go in there and start adding uh, how many of our uh, embassies are attacked. Yeah, some of those bodies were from Ankara, Turkey. I think it's in Ankara. But, uh, yeah, our embassy was on the last day. They gave Hillary a going away present. And she got uh, another one blown up right as she was going out the door. Yeah, but, but I mean. And it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that the president wasn't in the area. Because if the president would have been in the area, he'd have whipped that 12-gauge out, baby. Oh, yeah, he would have. Because he goes shooting all the time. All the time. You know, it, it, it's funny that, that this story came out, you know, where Obama came out and says, I go shooting all the time, and then they asked Jay Carney. <laughs> yeah. They said, well, if he goes shooting all the time up at Camp David, uh, are there any pictures of this? And he's like, uh, none that I'm aware of. <laughs> then they had to and, go to the trusty vault. Yeah, they went to the trusty vault. Basically, they took him out in the back, in you know, behind uh, behind the White House. Quick, hold it, fire this weapon. Yeah, hurry up. And, and and when you see the picture of it, and you know, Hutch will, I'm sure, have it as as our logo this week. It's playing on the live stream right now. If you're or if you're going to watch the SCR TV, so he's he's looking sporty out there. Yeah, if you want to say what's the wrongest way to hold a weapon. <laughs> That's basically how you do it. That butt stock's up a little high. <laughs> it's up quite high. And I guess I mean, that, uh, if he's shooting all that's the skeet, do is your shoulder. If he's shooting skeet, I guess he's freaking shooting straight ahead. I don't, I don't know how that's working out, but uh, usually that goes. You're kind of angling up a little bit, but yeah, because uh, you kind of want to, you want to hit the skeet on its upward path. Yeah. You don't want to hit it as it's on its way down because on its way down, it's farther away from you. Yeah, I don't know it's just going. harder to shoot. And, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you know what the, it's going on with the story. I had heard, you know, one of the questions they asked. They said, "Hey, you know, well, where does he go shooting at Camp David at?" And they said, "Oh, well, you know, when he goes up there, he goes to Camp David to relax. You know, this that and the other thing." I'm like, "Wait a second. He he goes to Camp David to relax. He goes to Hawaii to relax. He <laughs> golfs all the fucking time." What, what, do, what does he go there to relax from? He, he, I guess he has to relax from relaxing. I guess. He, he, uh, I guess he participated in the President's Cup, it was called, I think, something like that, that they hold up there that the Marines all uh, compete in. I guess he, some guy said that he came in there, he, he was there less than five minutes, and he was really didn't feel like he wanted to be there, and then he left. I don't know if he shot or not. Apparently, uh, he must have, but. Because uh, he shoots all the time. I mean, he accepted, he had this interview. He rarely speaks personally about firearms and is dismissed by many enthusiasts as an elite urban law professor who does not appreciate America's heritage of gun ownership. I'll buy that. Uh, he accepted in his interview that gun culture in rural areas was very different than that in urban areas such as his hometown of Chicago, which they went over over 40 gun murders already this, this year. Word. It's February yeah. 2nd. And they've got more murders than there are days. I mean, that's yeah. that's just uh, that's incredible. So I, I would think that in in the city of Chicago, they have a very vibrant gun culture. Apparently, yeah. You'd I figure mean, coming from Chicago, he'd be able to shoot like nobody's yeah. business. 
side, but, sideways and everything with the Glock. Oh, yeah, with the, with the Glock with the, side, oh, yeah. the sideways lost sights. Um, <laughs> but the, the thing is, did you see that there was a girl who performed at the inauguration? Yeah, that was sad, man. And, and she, he, from Chicago, you know, he brought one of the home, little homegirls with him. And, well, and, she, uh, was a, she was in a band. I mean, she played in the yeah. band, and then she got hit, like, less than a mile away from where Obama's house is. She got hit by a stray bullet in the park. And, you know, in all honesty, that's where the, that's where the discussion ought to be. The discussion ought to be about this madness in, in our cities. It, it is, I mean, there's a whole generation, more than one generation now, of black and Hispanic people that are being held hostage by a minority in their community that are gangbangers that need to be rounded up and separated from the rest of society. I mean, they really do. Uh, it, it's it's just amazing to me that we are seeding our cities, our major cities. We are letting the Democrats take them over and turn them into these freaking killing fields. Uh, that's where the that's where the conversation ought to be. There's no problem in rural America. God bless 26 souls in Connecticut. But when you put those t numbers of people that are murdered in those incidents against the numbers that are murdered every single year. In every single leftist city in America, they pale. I'm sorry, they do. They don't get reported. These are invisible people. These are invisible cultures that the that the leftist media has abandoned. Uh, and that's where the conversation ought to be, in my opinion. Well, the other part of the problem, too, Hutch, is you got these, you know, the. it's almost like the, they, the, the law enforcement and whatnot turn a blind eye to these gangs. Absolutely. It's like, well, we don't want to. We don't want to piss them off. So, well, soon so as we're going to identify as they... them. So they have they have these task forces that can identify, which you know, based on their their hand gestures or what color hats they're wearing or, you know, whatever tattoos they have, which gang they belong to. The bottom. The bottom line is, it doesn't matter what fucking gang they belong to. They're doing illegal stuff. Yeah. No and matter they're, they're how they're you cut it, no matter how you look at it, no matter how you slice it. These guys are not meant. They're, they're not out there being Boy Scouts and helping the elderly. They're terrorists. The only yeah. the only thing that's keeping them from being on a terrorist watch list is they're shooting each other. If they would if if they would break out and start well, attacking the, the that, public, that's the thing. If they would if they would just shoot each other, that that's on them. But the problem is because they can't shoot. They have no idea which <laughs> how to shoot. They end up they end up killing little kids that yeah. have absolutely nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe maybe that's what they should do is take these gang bangers and say, "Hey, look, all right, you guys want to be tough guys? We're going to teach you how to shoot, and and teach them how to shoot each other." Unfortunately, some of them go into the military for training like that, and then return to the streets. It's really it's really sickening. Uh, but but it, uh, my point is that we need to deal with that. You don't need to deal with the people in the country. You need to deal with these people in the city. That's where the murders are. Uh, anyway, the, Uni Amen. the United States Marine Corps is set to shed more than 20,000 active duty positions in the coming years and have already commenced a process meant to force some senior officers into early retirement. They're on course to cut around 4,000 positions a year through 2017, decreasing the total number of Marines to 182,000 from its peak last year of 202,000, according to a major scale-down order that was quietly issued last year. And I totally am not prepared for this. I thought this was about women in combat, and it clearly is not. Uh, but it is uh, a very serious issue. Yeah, the whole sequestration and whatnot, uh, you know, basically it's weakening our, our defenses. And you look around and you see all these, you know, hell, we're given, like Hutch said at the beginning of the show, we're given... F-16s and Abrams A-1 tanks to to uh, e Egypt. What's going to keep them from using them F-16s to attack Israel? And not only or that, you, you look what's going or on attack there. Attack our embassies. Attack themselves. If you look at what's going on in, in Egypt right now, oh, yeah. it could be a serious situation. I mean, they're getting serious over there. I don't know if you've checked it out, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, yeah, they're really not happy with the Muslim Brotherhood, and they're not happy with Obama either. And they understand that he is allied with the Muslim Brotherhood. I urge you to do your own research on this. There are people in uh, Tahrir Square, which is round. Uh, 
Thanks, Rush. Let me know about that. So Tahrir Square, which is round, they're in there holding signs that basically say, Obama, your bitch is our dictator. I mean, I've seen several of these signs. Uh, they're, they're clearly not uh, not happy at all uh, with our backing of this because cause the guy's colors are starting to show. And, and the average person, especially in, in a place like Egypt or even in Syria, I mean, these places were largely secular. I mean, they had a middle class and a lower middle class that they kind of, Iran's the same way, that were kind of Western. I mean, not, not Western, but, you know, they didn't have all the Sharia restrictions on them. You know, they got people in Mali right now getting, well, now that the French, for, you know, this is another story uh, that amazes me. The French were able to push the Islamists the hell out of Timbuktu and the hell out of other areas in Mali. And I think I even posted some, some things on the website that interviewed some of these people in Mali. It was it was racial. I mean, they had the Arabs, the Pakistanis and Arabs, uh, basically persecuting all the black Muslims, the Malians. There's like three or four tribes that are that are African in, in, uh, in heritage. They're black-skinned, okay? And, and you can see them on these films when the French cleared everybody out. I mean, they were chopping some hands off now. I mean, for, for smoking and for, for, <laughs> for drinking and, and stealing. I mean, the hands were coming off. There's a whole lot of black, no-hand individuals over there. Yeah. Um, it's it, it, it's crazy. It is crazy that, that you know that these people say, you know, anybody that says we want Sharia law, it basically just doesn't understand what the hell it is, you know. Um, and, and that's the thing, I, and I think that that's what they're starting to see in Egypt, is because <clears throat> when they were uh, under more, not Morsi, Mubarak, um, Mubarak, Mubarak. Yeah, he was a dictator, and yeah, he ruled with an iron fist, but he wasn't ruling them under Sharia law. Right. And and there was you know, there was uh, tourism, and there, yeah, and there was women. They, they, they were able to make money and whatnot, yeah. and, and they're not getting that now because nobody wants to go there because, number one, the country's in turmoil. Number two, the Muslim Brotherhood's in charge. And number three, Muba or what's his name? Morsi. Morsi. Morsi wants to implement Sharia law. So that's... Ten times worse than the Iron Fist that Mubarak ran them under. Yeah, absolutely. So the, I think that you know they they started to say, okay, well, we got rid of Mubarak, we're going to be okay now. You know, yeah. we're going to rule ourselves. Then the Christian you know, churches started getting burned down, and the people started getting policed up by the moral police, and and the women started getting beaten in the streets. And and I'll tell you what, there's some uh, uh, I can't think of the right word, but th there's some uh, monster men over there i mean they i saw a film tonight of them like five or six guys groping this woman everybody has their hands in her dress and it's just like these people are animals man you can't i i don't i don't get it man i mean it's such a hate for women in that culture and i don't understand why more feminists more american feminists uh aren't getting in this fight it, it clearly shows you uh the phoniness of the feminist movement in the united states yeah, it's well. We want, you know, we want to be able to wear pants, and we we want to be able to have jobs, and we want to be able to, you know, what? Why don't you stand up for for your, the women across the planet? Oh my God! And that say, hey, look, you know what? Th these women are being uh, sexually abused. They're being sexually mutilated. Yeah. They're being tortured. That they're they're being ruled with an iron fist, and. Nobody's nobody's saying anything. Can you I, imagine? I don't hear any of any, any of the feminist groups in the United States, anywhere on the planet, for that matter, saying a damn thing about them. Now you got the, these actors who do the thing for uh, Amnesty International, and they have they have all these parades and yeah. you know whatever the hell it is, but they but they're not saying nothing about that. And then code. This paint, is code. more this is more brutal than anything that that Amnesty, Amnesty International takes up for. They take up for, oh, you waterboarded this guy and blah 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 blah. Okay, that might be bad. We got intel whatever. But th these people are torturing women on a daily basis as part of their as part of their life and nobody's standing up for them. And then Code Pink gets on the flotilla to Israel and backs Hamas and Hezbollah. It's sickening. I mean, it's phony. Wake up, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, 
Code Pink is not a feminist organization. It has nothing to do with pink or anything else. The Army began discharging and reassigning 60,000 soldiers, according to the Daily News of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Army leaders were informed the Army is fundamentally altering its structure and that some fully qualified soldiers will be denied reenlistment. Here we go again. According to an Army Times report, the problem will come if there's a need to reverse the current retreat in the Middle East. The war is most likely to demand long-term, larger-scale land forces, explained Don Lee, who is currently a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. So as we self-destruct and, and turn our uh, swords into plowshares or however that went, you know, that uh, looks like that's where we're heading. I mean, and, and you know there's always class warfare in the military. They'll take the mid-grade people that haven't uh, been able to reach retirement age yet. They'll take the captains and the majors, and they'll leave all every single general. Uh, class warfare, that's going to happen. It's a shame. Now, speaking of soldiers, we, we spoke at the beginning of the show about uh, new faces in the, in the Congress. Could Republican soldier who wanted to put New York Times editors behind bars unseat Arkansas senior Democratic senator? Now, there's this freshman guy, Ward, that, that's coming on the, on the scene, and I'm not going to get too deep into him, but I just wanted to uh, read a letter that he wrote and, and introduce him to the resistance. Uh, this guy's name is Tom Cotton of Arkansas, and he was like a, a lawyer and all kinds of stuff, and then he, he went to uh, Iraq as a, uh, let's see here, he, he was... Uh, a graduate of Harvard Law School who paid off his student loans in one year with a job at the prestigious law firm Gibson, Dunn & Crutcher, as well as a former consultant at McKinsey. Cotton's educational and civilian background radiates Ivy League privilege. However, between his Gibson, Dunn job and his post at McKinsey, Cotton also held a post that endeared him fiercely to conservatives. Out of a platoon leader, in the Screaming Eagles, in the 101st Airborne. And he wrote this letter to the New York Times, uh, castigating several journalists for publishing information about a secret government program. Dear Messrs. Keller, Lickbaugh, and Risen, congratulations on disclosing our government's highly classified anti-terrorist funding program, June 23rd. I apologize for not writing sooner. But I'm a lieutenant in the United States Army, and I spent the last four days patrolling one of the more dangerous areas in Iraq. Alas, operational security and common sense prevent me from even revealing this unclassified location in a private medium like email. Unfortunately, as I supervised my soldiers late one night, I heard a booming explosion several miles away. I learned a few hours later that a powerful roadside bomb killed one soldier and severely injured another from my 130-man company. I deeply hope that we can find and kill or capture the terrorists responsible for that bomb. But of course, these terrorists do not spring from the soil like Plato's guardians, no. They require financing to obtain mortars and artillery shells, priming explosives, wiring and circuitry, not to mention for training and payments to locals willing to emplace bombs in exchange for a few months' salary. As your story states, the program was legal, briefed to Congress, supported in the government and financial industry, and very successful. Not anymore. <clears throat> you may think that you have done a public service, but you have gravely endangered the lives of my soldiers and all other soldiers and innocent Iraqis here. Next time I hear that familiar explosion, or next time I feel it, <coughs> I will wonder whether we could have stopped that bomb had you not instructed terrorists how to evade our financial surveillance. And by the way, having graduated from Harvard Law School, this is where it gets good, and practiced with a federal appellate judge and two Washington law firms before becoming an infantry officer, I am well versed in the espionage laws relevant to this story and others, laws you have plainly violated. I hope that my colleagues at the Department of Justice match the courage of my soldiers here and prosecute you and your newspaper to the fullest extent of the law. By the time we return home, maybe you will be in your rightful place, not at the, Pulit not at the Pulitzer announcements, but behind bars. Very truly yours, Tom Cotton, Baghdad, Iraq. I thought that was just outstanding word, and I had to read it. Oh, yeah, by far. And, and we've been talking about that on the show for, for well, years now. The fact that, that 
the media feels as though any kind of classified information they have, it, it's, you know, it, it's open game on it. And they can go run and, you know, whatever story they have. And the thing is, they don't even have to have, you know, it used to be before you could publish a story, you had to have your facts straight. Now they just have to have an idea that the facts are right. And then they run with it. And, and it's like, you know, they don't have a problem running a story that's totally false getting everybody all wound up and then go, my bad. I, I love mean, the fact and, that and we just talked about it. We just talked about it with mm -hmm. the, with uh, George Zimmer. They they persecuted this guy in the, in the media for fucking six months, and then now they go, my bad. And I, I just like the fact that there's a guy in Congress uh, that, that feels like I do, that they should be put in prison for this, that this is criminal. This The level of this is criminal. It really oh, is. Absolutely. And, and we're working on a story that we can't break right now because we don't have enough information. We don't have a... Or, or sources, and we only have a single source. Uh, we're not doing that. But there, there could be some, uh, if anything happens, and there's any type of coming to Jesus on all this unconstitutional stuff that's going on, I feel that right up there next to all these perpetrators from Washington ought to be these journalists. Oh, yeah, because they're complicit. Absolutely, and they ought to be charged, just like the rest of them, because they're definitely allowing it to happen. Now they finally approved... I mean, we don't have a whole lot of time. We got a lot of stories to go through here, but they finally approved another fifty billion dollars for Chris Christie and all the all the hurricane uh, victims that that the money's not even going to go to. You know, it's not. It's going everywhere else but there. I mean, I could sit down here and read everything, but my goodness, well, that's over a hundred billion dollars so far. Yeah, because they got sixty before, right? Well, first they got nine. First yeah. they got, then they got sixty, and now they got fifty more. Is that it? Yeah, that's that's so ridiculously off yeah, the wall. One hundred, one hundred nineteen million, one hundred nineteen billion. Excuse me. That's long overdue. Senator, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid said, "Long overdue." Jeez, no, what's long gross. overdue is the fact that it, Harry. What's long overdue is the budget. Yeah, exactly. You haven't done one of those in four years. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, that's just uh, that's something that we can't afford it for one thing. Uh, now, uh, another one hit me, Ward. I mean, and I have to give full disclosure. I'm a monthly uh, donator to the Wounded Warrior Project. I send them money every month. So do uh, I. The church says Wounded Warrior Project refused their money. Why are these people doing that? I mean, why? A Christian church and school in Florida are devastated after they said Wounded Warrior Project refused to accept their fundraising effort because it was religious in nature. We have got to get away from that being wrong. Because if we don't, what replaces it, you can't have a representative democracy without religion. I mean, you can have some elements that are atheist, I suppose, agnostic. But there has to be a basis of good for it to work. And that's always been our our pinnacle of goodness. Yeah, I, I don't understand the... the the idea behind it i mean that's you know, where it, see what happened let me look before i forget this thought that's zipping through my synapses here uh before the federal government of lbj lbj started this let's be clear i mean roosevelt started it but it wasn't anything until lbj got hold of it but it used to be that the foundation of help in the community came from the churches that's where yeah. that's where people that were hungry went that's where people that needed Housing and everything else went, and the, the pastors and the rectors and the, everybody. And, and what happened was you took care of your own. Yeah. It, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the government took care of you. The government did what the government does, and the locals did what the locals do. And so when you lost your job, you know, the church would help you out. You know, your neighbors would help you out. You know, it, it wasn't, you know, and, and you, and, the thing was, the people that, that that happened to would want to get back on their feet as soon as possible sure. because it, it, it was a it, it was an embarrassment to them to to live off of their neighbors. But then the and government now, stepped in. The government took over all these functions and these clergy. A lot of them. I blame the clergy a little bit here too because a lot of the clergy now that the government is taking care of all this, they don't want to get back into that. They want that money for themselves, you know. Maybe not personally for them themselves, but I'm, 
uh, some of them are, are, are well you know, I, I'm not going to go there because uh, I know that I, I know that there's there's a hospital in Pittsburgh that in fact uh, Mercy Hospital when they were bought by uh, UPMC that Mercy Hospital in order for UPMC to buy them number one the the Pope himself had to sign off on it. <laughs> damn <laughs> and, and, yeah and number two they had to there had to be a clause in the contract that said that they would do uh, a certain amount of st uh, stuff for the poor and for free. Yeah. That had to be in the contract in order for the Pope to sign off on it. So the the church is still pushing for that kind of stuff. The The problem is that people have gotten away from the church, and yeah. the, the churches are struggling because, you know, the membership's down. Um, the, you know, nobody's going to church anymore, so that they, they, they're not generating the cash like they used to. I mean, it, it's a trickle down theory, you know, trickle down effect. Yeah, well, but, they need they need the Lord in Chicago. I mean, the, mur God, yeah. the murder toll in Chicago for the month of January now stands at 42. That was a couple of days ago, making it the deadliest January in Chicago in more than 10 years. Last time. Uh, there was that many murders. It was in 2002 when there were 45 homicides. Uh, that place is just going to hell, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it is. Oh, uh, here, that's uh, they even talk about that honor student. The last fatality happened in the Kenwood neighborhood on Tuesday, where a 15-year-old honor student was shot and killed while taking shelter from the rain in a park. Earlier in the day, 27-year-old Devin Common was shot dead while two other men were critically wounded in a greater Grand Crossing neighborhood shooting, according to family members. I mean, that's just uh, that's too bad, man. And just so you know, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to the show notes link page on the website, and all these links to all these stories, uh, there's just, uh, I think there's 18 pages of show notes tonight because I'm old-fashioned. Yeah. Old that's just how I roll. Uh, but uh, you've done it to me once again, Ward. You have opened the can of worms that I might have to find this fat bastard's picture again. And guess who's back? Yeah, Al Sharpton. <laughs> uh, well, apparently, uh, we had we had the story a couple weeks ago that somebody had actually went and found Tawana Brawley because we had talked about it on the show. And, and it was funny because we had talked about it on the show. And then we find this story where, you know, years later, they found her and, and, and whatnot. But now, because they found her, She's uh, been ordered to pay the money <laughs> that, that she owes the guy for the defamation lawsuit. So for 25 years, she's been living a major lie, says Dutchess County Prosecutor Stephen Pagones, who was falsely accused of raping Brawny in 1987 and tracked her down thanks to the Post. To me, this has always been about responsibility and accountability, said the former ADA, who also uh, who won the $190,000 defamation lawsuit against Brawny, or Brawley, uh, who's now 40, a nurse in Virginia more than a decade ago. I'm not going to go through all the stuff where he explains it, but basically uh, in 1997, Pagones won a defamation lawsuit against Sharpton, Brawley, and her lawyers. Maddox was forced, was found liable for $97,000, Mason for $188,000, Sharpton was ordered to pony up $66,000, and that uh, was coughed up by O.J. Simpson lawyer Johnny Cochran. Oh, yeah, was it? So basically, Sharpton didn't even pay the sixty-six grand that, that that he owed. And this is the same thing as with Trayvon Martin. I mean, yeah. same exact thing. They said seemingly a lifetime ago, a 15-year-old Brawley of Wappingers Falls in Dutchess County was found in a trash bag covered in feces with the N-word and bitch scrawled upside down on her body and KKK carved into her shoe. And they were blaming this dude for this. Yeah. You know? It's... Well, they were blaming a bunch of cops. Oh, yeah. But, uh, and that's the only reason that anybody knows who Al Sharpton is today is because of that and a couple other incidents. Now, in Mali, like I was saying... Uh, Sharia law was implemented by the Islamic savages, and it was racist. I mean, they looked at it, and the French liberation of Gao has given us a look into life under Islam. The system that al-Qaeda and other jihadis had implemented in Mali 
looks a good deal like the same Islamic colonialism that scarred Africa and produced the black African slave trade that in the Western Hemisphere, the United States of America eradicated in 300 years. Uh, but they produced the black African slave trade still being practiced by Arab Muslims today. So uh, anyway, they, they were doing, like I said, I didn't realize we had a story on this. Uh, but all of the ones under that were condemned to the harsh punishment were all black Malayans. San Ray, Pule, Bamba, and Della, traditionally the slaves of the Tureg. The jihadis were a mixture of Malayan Arabs and Tuaregs, as well as many foreign jihadis. So that's uh, another element of the religion of peace, ladies and gentlemen. And we talked about it uh, when we were uh, covering the war in Libya. They were doing the same thing to the Africans there. The black Africans, the Arabs, were uh, ex sum summarily executing them, torturing them. Uh, this is a highly racial uh, racial group of pricks here. Yeah, it is, and and you know, it, 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 it's almost it drives me nuts because it's like, you know, you see it happening again and again yeah. and again, and it's Einstein's definition of insanity. You know, you. You do the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. There's nothing that's going to come good of this. No. Nothing has and ever come good of, of, of an Islamic-dominated uh, culture. And we can't use, when you say over and over again, we have, to, we have to broaden the definition of that a little bit because I believe it's, not, it's probably not being taken in the same way we're talking about. This is much older than the United States. This is 17 oh, yeah. centuries, 1,700 years. These backwards inbred people have been doing this exact same thing. And, and in a lot of cases, they are literalists. So when they say in the Koran, behead, that's why they still behead. You know, civilized people don't do that. But these people are, are like I said, they're still chopping hands off and still cutting tongues out and everything else. I mean, it's uh, 17 centuries. It's not, they're not going anywhere quickly. The only thing they're learning is how to make bombs. And uh, incidentally, the, uh, there was a hell of an explosion in the Iranians' uh, nuclear facility underground. It's like hardened. Yeah. And it, like, it lit up like 19 missiles or something. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like they didn't go in after them for a while. That's excellent. Yeah, well, and when they did, it was with a Geiger counter. Yeah. <laughs> Through an escape tunnel. But uh, God bless Israel, man. <laughs> or whoever did it. I mean, maybe maybe Obama was in there with the 12-gauge. You never know. Yeah, it could have been. You know, he's, it, he's a pretty tough guy. That's took the picture of. Yeah, he was, he, he, he's, shooting, he's shooting the, uh, he's the, the warheads off of these rockets in, in Israel. You know, I mean, in, in Iran. I just got a visual, man. I to try, to try to remember. You remember the segue? The little two wheel thing that was going to change yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. Can you yeah, see yeah. him? Can you see him riding one of them down the street? <laughs> with a with shotgun. A, with a bicycle helmet. <laughs> with a shotgun backwards. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, the Illinois school district. This is disturbing. Like a slowly spreading virus, Islam is worming its way into American education, where it can do the most damage to young minds. In Skokie, Illinois, they got a school district that banned Halloween. Because all the costumes might offend the Muslims. You know what? We got. I mean, people, the, the, the people that live there, go to the fucking meeting. Well, he, here's the thing. You know, I mean, there was another story, and I didn't put it in. There was a a, a school uh, somewhere. I can't remember where it was that was doing the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic. In Arabic. Yeah, I saw that. That's unreal. And, and it's like, wait a second. That, I mean, you're not you even know, doing it in Italian. Or, or, or the thing is, it's it's bad enough that I got to press one to fucking speak English when I call anybody. But, but goddamn, and you know, and it's all between you know English and Spanish right now. But yeah. fuck, if I got to learn English, Spanish, and go through the whole menu for you know the 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 fucking uh, <laughs> the language of phlegm. And they'll fuck you up too because it it goes from right to left. So you right off the bat, you'd be messed up. Yeah, you'd miss a and, sentence right off the bat. And you'd be like, oh. <laughs> and now this Press is three for. Oh. Now <laughs> seriously, this is this is disturbing because of what they. Even worse, Skokie School District 68 has added 
Eid ul Adha as a day off, dropping Veterans Day as a holiday. So they can celebrate an Islamic holiday. Well, you know, the thing that really irritates me Veterans is Day. the fact that, that, that uh, well, I, I have a real problem with Veterans Day. Because Veterans Day isn't a national holiday. It's not? No. I don't get it off work. Do you get Well, you no. would because you're in the military. But but those of us who who don't who aren't in the military don't get that day off. I don't get off Veterans Day, and I'm a veteran. I think it's bullshit that these kids get off and they never serve. <laughs> I hear you. Hey, God bless America, ladies and gentlemen. That's about it. Email the show scrtv at live dot com. Go to steelcityresistance.wordpress.com for several resources. Uh, the Facebook you can read page. the re- rest of the stories because we sure as hell don't have enough time to do it all. <laughs> we might have to. Well, no, let's not go there. Uh, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Steel City Resistance. So we just got a new light tonight, I noticed. Uh, there's always a lot of activity there. Um, call the show, 412-254-3750. Anyway. Ward, you got anything else for the nation? No, sir. I am over and out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting us into your life for an hour, and we will get back with you next week.